All right, Sam, let's do another video. Sounds good. Uh, this will be number three. We did the other two a while back of um, checking out microphones. Um, mm -hmm. And just to recap, we looked at the different types of mics and um, talked about using an analyzer mic for, why don't we use an analyzer mic for everything? And then we took and ran a pulse into um, we decided, several headphones, mm -hmm. we decided on using these headphones. And um, today what we'll do is we'll go back through those mics and uh, run a pulse, but we'll also grab the audio from the pulse and then we'll grab the audio from the microphone so the pulse will go out to the headphones, out of the headphone, into the microphone, out of the microphone, um, and then I will then record it. And we'll also look at both the pulse that's being sent to the headphones okay. and what the microphone it's is picking, picking up. up from the headphone. So we'll Got look it. at a before and after. Um, and kind of the overall thing we're looking at here is... Um, just how different microphones are. And the fact that um, I th what kind of got me on this line is this contrast where we have instruments and there's this push of like getting the best speakers that are the most linear possible and the best amplifiers are the lowest amount of distortion. Mm -hmm. And the, there's this audiophile push, even in pro audio, to have everything as accurate as possible. But the microphones aren't accurate. And then we got these mics that are just <laughs> all over the map. And not only are they all over the map, we intentionally mm -hmm. find mics that are wrong mm -hmm. in order to get sounds we want. And, and it just, there's a beautiful contrast mm -hmm. there. Um, so I thought we would dive into looking at the way these different mics affect uh, sound. And using a pulse is a very difficult sound to reproduce. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw a comment on the other video about... When we were miking the square wave pulse on the headphones, um, talking about like when I did the headphone, Mighty Headphone Quest, putting the microphone up inside, maintaining pressure, like so we, we okay, seal it off. Got it. And when you seal it off, then the square wave can be more accurately reproduced by the mic because the pressure is in there. Oh, okay, got it. Um, and also, but on that side of things, how often do we take a mic and, and seal, seal it off it to an yeah. instrument? In the real world, we set it out as an audio probe. So mm -hmm. um, the square wave is being sent to the headphones. It's not being accurately reproduced by the headphones. It'll reproduce the initial spike, fall down, grab the negative spike, come up. The speaker, unless there's DC, it might go all the way out and stay out. And if all mm -hmm. the pressure was there and the, it was super airtight, then it would hold the microphone and hold it <laughs> high and then come back down. Yeah. But uh, we're going to take some real world aspect to this rather than <laughs> manufacturing. Okay. In any case, um, these are the mics you picked last time or we picked. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's check it out. Okay. Do we want to look at the analyzer mic first? Yeah. So I'm going to turn the pop popper on. Okay. I'm going to put this here. And we should see the pulse there as yep. the yellow on the scope. Mm -hmm. um, and then that mic, you can talk into the mic and see if we see it on the and scope. And not scream like last yeah. time. Hello, hello, hello. Try doing a tone. Oh. Ooh. Pretty nice sine wave there. <laughs> okay. I got a nice sine wave. All right. Okay. So here's this just like not sealed up. We get two little thin spikes. Okay, and so you're mm. just holding the mic to it. it. Yeah, yeah and I hope so we're seeing the initial spike up, and um, now that square wave that we're seeing coming out of the board with this falling response is actually mod the actual square wave coming out of the unit is flat on top. So mm. that's, that has mm -hmm. to do with the mixing board. But in any case, we see kind of what we expect to see. Yeah. Now you're going to seal them up using both muffs and tighten it up in there. And there we've gotten the low end. And that's kind of the same thing as like when an in-ear doesn't fit right, we don't get all the low end. Mm -hmm. And here we're getting more low end. All these big waves are low mm -hmm. end. Um, and this is also uh, like when your headphones aren't on all the way. If they, mm -hmm. You get a little leak. So now you've made it tighten. Mm -hmm. um, but since we don't do that with instruments usually, uh, we can move on from there. Plus it's going to be hard to do some of these Yeah. Ones. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Um, 
what do we want to do now? So we've seen what an analyzer mic does. It grabs a nice spike. Let's look at that one more time. Okay. With or without? Without cupping it, yeah. Okay. So we see a nice spike. We see very little ringing. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the headphones more than the mic. And then we see very little ringing in the cover. So it's very flat with the two spikes. Yeah. And that really is... Kind of what we want to see. Yeah. Or? And also we're going to hear that. So if we be quiet for a second, we let, and then we'll put that up. I'll put that up in the video. Okay. And they'll listen to the mic. And I'll turn up the tone or the initial. And go back to the mic. And there you have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now... Um, so we don't blast this out. I'm going to turn down the headphones. And I'm, gonna... I'm not going to turn down the headphones. I'm going to turn down the headphones. And let's unplug that mic. And what was the first one? Do you remember what the first I one was? I really don't. I think we used this guy. Yeah, I think we used the big The big, the big yeah, the D12. Mm. And... and so we're going to see what this does. We're going to send the same sound to it, and we'll see what it does. Are you using the right side, right? Um, I don't know. Put your ear to it. Oh, no. I know I'm using the right oh, yeah, the oh, microphone. Yeah. It's the silver one, right? Hang on for a second. Yeah. Silver side, yeah. He doesn't really pick up anything. Oh! Well, I turned up the gain. So, I've turned the gain up quite a bit. I'm sending it much hotter. It's really not picking up. Now, this is a dynamic mic instead of a condenser mic. Mm -hmm. So we're sending that yellow signal to it, and what's coming from it is um, that blue signal. It's not Now, see, we don't have a lot of lead on the front, Yeah. And, but we've got the back lead. Uh, we'll be able to listen to that in the video and mm -hmm. see what it's done to the sound um, cool, yeah. and listen to the before and after. And what kind of instruments is this mic typically used for? I think originally it was a vocal mic that added warmth, mm. you know, and it's got kind of a big, lar a large diaphragm. I think it's got a one-inch diaphragm, and it's shock-mounted to not re create rumble. But because it kind of artificially adds that warmth and low end, people liked it on kick drum. It gives uh -huh. a big springy kick drum. Um, and that kind of relates back to those other thing videos we did where your internal resonance is gone, so you're looking to add warmth mm -hmm. to a mic. To replace that. To replace it, yeah. So the mics are actually being artificially yeah. tilted to replace this warmth that's missing yeah. because we don't sound like ourselves when we're capturing yeah. the mic. And you just like can't mic on whole yeah. instrument. It just isn't going to yeah. work. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Or do we want to... Uh, just unplug matter. the mic. Oh, yeah, we can turn down the headphone. Um, do you... Let's do the shaver mic. And this guy comes out from the top? Yeah. Now I'm going to take a look at this. This has got some settings on it. It's got a high frequency boost, which we'll leave where it is. And it's got a low frequency roll off, which we'll leave it there. Okay. So. Less bouncy. Less bouncy, but still a really low initial spike. Yeah, it's not really fast enough to grab that. Mm -hmm. See, the, the um, analyzer mic has got a very lightweight diaphragm, so it's very articulate, and it's he's able to grab really, that quick spike. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, what's interesting is the headphone driver that's being reproduced is a two-inch thing, so it's actually able to reproduce it, as mm -hmm. we know, because we saw it there. Yeah. So, okay. Um, let's go ahead, and um, Stevie Nicks would sing into that mic. That was her... I remember you told me that. Yeah. All right, so let's do college. this guy. Space here. needle mic. Space needle <laughs> mic, which is an odd mic. Nobody uses these things. I've never even seen one before. <laughs> they look My cool. sister was in Germany um, when we were younger, and I'd never been to Europe. And I'd been running the sound company, and Tiffany was out there. And she said, can I get you anything? I said, yeah, get me mics. And she came back with those <laughs> two really weird Sennheiser mics I've never seen in my life. I've had them ever since. It's been, it was like 19... 85 or something. I kind of love that. It's They're really weird cool. little space needle mics, and I love them. Now that's got some response to it, mm -hmm. but it's also got some bounce. I'm curious yeah. to hear what it sounds like. Now, we're not listening yeah. to these, but uh, when the video's done, we'll actually listen to what Ooh, they sound like. Yeah. Ooh, actually, we can listen to them. 
probably won't be as clear as the video though. Interesting. Okay. So this side here mm -hmm. is the microphone and this is the other part. So we can just let you listen to the mic there. You can hear the mic. Uh -huh. Let's go back a mic real quick. Oh, interesting. It's way sharper. Like, mm -hmm. it's like. Go, let's go back to. Here. Let's go back another mic since we didn't listen to it. Go okay. put the D twelve on there. Okay. And this side is the mic. The mic. Okay. Huh. Dollar. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Oh yeah. It's kind of flatter and duller mm -hmm. and doesn't have a... It doesn't okay. have that as much like that ding. Yeah, let's try the um, shaver mic. Okay. Now, shaver mics are not known for their low end. Oh, shaver uh, mic. Yeah, the shaver okay. mic is actually kind of a dynamic version of a condenser mic. It's kind of mm -hmm. a, a way to... Kind of got a low end pop to it, like yeah. a poof, like it's kind a puff, of nice. a puff of air. Yeah, um, all it right. seems to complement the the popper well. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then let's see if this mic works. I don't think we did it last time, but it's an SM57, so it'd be nice oh. just to try. Or I said SM56, which is an SM57 that's on a weird little oh, yeah, thing. Pivot, yeah. Yeah, it works. Okay. Responsive on that first bounce. This is interesting. Hmm. It's got a little dong to it. It does. Little well, that's ring. kind of what I was hearing actually in um, one of the mics that we just tested. Probably this guy e or this. No, one. that guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That little dong is pro is like a ring. That's probably the diaphragm ringing. It's mm. the diaphragm isn't fully damp. So like if you and I've worked on enough fifty sevens to know that if you hit that, it's got a little ding to yeah. it. So that's actually kind that's of a really ring. It, yeah. It's being it's like hitting it like a bell. So it's uh -huh. got a little ring to it. Wow, that's really interesting um, that you can like pick that up at all. Really. Yeah. Okay, should we get to the, um, your fancy mic? Yes. Okay. Um, let's do the Neumann. This is, uh, the, is this the most expensive mic This have? is the most expensive mic of the bunch. Oh, I should turn the headphones down for that. Um, and okay, go ahead. we're pulling from this yeah. side. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah, it's really neutral sounding. It's huh? really neutral. It doesn't seem to add much. I mean, it's elevating some of the things that are already there, but not past like it's just a good sound. Yeah, and then let's take um, that's with the high pass filter. Remember we put the high yeah, pass yeah. on last time, so I'm gonna take the high pass Ooh, I can off. Hear it going. Now put it on. Still pretty good though. I mean, like. Did it get woofier? It it got a little more painful. Um, it's more yeah, it's more a little bit more like dongy. Um, but it's still not bad. I can hear you just holding the mic yeah. now. The handling noise. And I can definitely hear a puff. I can hear yeah. artificially. Mm -hmm. An artificial high amount of low end, but yeah. I think I mean we we this is we'll see it too. Yeah. Okay. So now let's try the last one, the ribbon mic. <clears throat> which remember that looked really weird last time. It just kind of ramped yeah, up and let's down. Yeah. How, how that's going? Okay. Um, okay. Does it pick out from both sides here? Yes. Uh, it, the one with the Royer with the label is the side you want. Uh, okay. 
I love its little label. Okay, it's really pretty. This up. Oh yeah, this one's crazy. He does not play by any rules. <laughs> this microphone does what it wants. It really you can you can hear all the low end that it's adding. To get a oh look. yeah. Oh yeah. That's crazy. And you, uh, yeah. Now it I'm, makes sense I'm, looking at it too. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can hear that low end that mm -hmm. we're seeing in yeah. the um, in the picture there. That's really interesting. What is this mic usually used for? Um, it's a ribbon mic. It's a really unique mic, and it has a. I mean, it's a different type of thing because this mm -hmm. one, all these these dynamics have like a circular voice mm -hmm. coil diaphragm. This has a kind of a. a if you hold it up, there's yeah. a, a little. There's a circle really in there, and there's some intricate. stretched foil. Plates uh -huh. like mylar, like really thin plastic with metalized film on it mm -hmm. that is conductive, and um, it acts like a, there's two of those plates, or mm -hmm. there's a plate and a diaphragm. This is that two diaphragms in it, and when the diaphragm moves closer and farther, it changes the capacitance and it looks at that, so mm -hmm. it is able to have extremely, extremely lightweight precision. Precision, and this one has got. A tiny little ribbon. I mean, I, they call it a ribbon mic, and it's a little piece of like incredibly lightweight foil or metalized plastic mm -hmm. that's stretched or held between two uh, ends. And then there's magnets on either side, and when it moves, mm -hmm. and the air can kind of get around it, uh -huh. but it's just kind of waffling in the wind. But just about anything moves it. So it's really delicate and really That's sensitive. why you can't see through this very well. Yeah. It's got a lot of screening on it. Um, yeah, they're, they're, very, they're known for being very fragile. Um, but they do grab a unique sound. And because they're such... With the microphone, the lighter the weight diaphragm, the more mm -hmm. accurate you can grab it. And we've mm -hmm. kind of gone the gamut. We've yeah. got the tiny little diaphragm that grabs a tiny little portion of sound mm -hmm. very accurately. And then we've got a very lightweight ribbon... And then we've got lightweight, large diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some um, medium and large diaphragms. And this is kind of a fairly small diaphragm, mm -hmm. medium diaphragm dynamics. So we kind of went the gamut there. Uh -huh. All right. So it'll be fun. We can go back yeah. and listen to this when I do the video, and too. I'll listen, too. I'll listen to the sound. What? Yeah. And we can do maybe another video of like talking about it, too. Yeah. Yeah. We can analyze what's going yeah. on. Um, really all right. cool. And uh, yeah, just uh, I just find it so fascinating when there's this almost hypocrisy of we must <laughs> do things perfect, so we must use flawed tools in order to create perfection. And only on the microphones. Uh, actually, no, there's more to it. Uh -huh. I always thought about like, you have audiophiles that spend tens of thousands of dollars on speakers and cables and wires mm -hmm. and making everything perfect to have this incredible listening environment. And then they'll put an album on and they'll really like the way an album is, is sounding. Yeah. Why don't they just find out what studio monitors they had in the mm -hmm. recording mm -hmm. studio? Yeah. And just use those. Yeah. Because you could actually hear what they yeah. made, listen to yeah. when they made the record. Mm -hmm. But it's like... It, but studio monitors are about creating flaw, pointing out flaws, yeah. and home hi-fi is about glossing over flaws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a whole yeah. conundrum there. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you, Sam. That was fun. Yeah. It's really interesting. Uh, shrimp twisting. Shrimp twisting. It's really okay. shrimp twisting. <laughs> <laughs> fun. All right. Um, we'll do another video soon. And um, cool. Sounds good.